If you love trivia, you've come to the right place. We've got a full hour of questions and answers for you from six different pub quizzes. Let's do this. We're going to start tonight with a topic that's been in the news a lot lately. It's billionaire scandals. Let's do this. Name the tech entrepreneur whose net worth plunged from billions to zero after she and her blood testing company were accused of fraud. Question two. Which quirky billionaire once bought a casino just to tear down its sign? This one goes back a few decades. He had a reputation for being a little nutty. Question three. Which billionaire famously memorized employee license plates so he could track how long they stayed at work? This guy is the co-founder of a very famous tech company. Question four. This one goes back more than 100 years. A member of which infamous wealthy family died on the Titanic? A hint for you. His family name is on a famous New York City art museum. And the final question in this round. Which popular author fell off the Forbes billionaires list after donating large amounts of money to charity? That's not scandalous, obviously. But she has said some things recently that many consider not very charitable. I'll give you a few more seconds to finalize your answers. All right, the answer to question one. The former billionaire fraudster's name is Elizabeth Holmes. By the way, she is currently behind bars. The answer to question two is Howard Hughes. Yes, he actually bought a casino to tear down its sign. The bright light was keeping him up at night. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Microsoft founder Bill Gates is the answer to question three. He memorized employee license plate numbers. The billionaire who died on the Titanic was named Benjamin Guggenheim. By the way, he was traveling with his French mistress. She survived the sinking. And the final question in this round involves Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. She's become quite the controversial figure recently because of her comments about transgender people. If you're enjoying this pub quiz so far, we hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. If you're not enjoying it, keep your thumbs to yourself. <laughs> Moving on to round two now, world landmarks. In this round, I'll show you a photograph of a famous landmark and you must name it. The first landmark is probably the most recognizable on the list but I'll give you a few moments to write down your answer. The second landmark takes us to a completely different part of the world. You've probably seen plenty of pictures, but can you name it? Number three, I believe, may be the toughest landmark to name, but it's quite a sight to see. Our fourth landmark is easy to recognize, but difficult to say. That's your hint. And we'll end with an easy landmark. Can you identify landmark number five? I'll give you a few more seconds to finalize your answers and have another sip of beer. All right, here are the answers to round two. Our first landmark is the Taj Mahal in India. It's a mausoleum built in the 1600s. Landmark number two is Machu Picchu in Peru. It's often called the Lost City of the Incas. We travel to the country of Jordan for landmark number three. Petra is a rose-colored city carved out of the side of a mountain. Our fourth landmark is Neuschwanstein Castle in southern Germany. It was built by King Ludwig II of Bavaria in the 19th century. Number five is, of course, the Sydney Opera House in Australia while its construction and high cost were controversial. It's one of the most recognizable landmarks in the world. <laughs> Round three should be a lot of fun and a little challenging. I'll give you two events in history and you have to decide which event came first. Question one, which came first, the French Revolution or the American Revolution? <laughs> Question two, which came first, the first Starbucks, or the first Tim Hortons. Question three, which came first, the premiere of Jersey Shore or the premiere of Downton Abbey? Question four, which came first, the movie Saturday Night Fever, or the television show Saturday Night Live? 
And finally, question five. Many of you have been researching this tonight. <laughs> Which came first, Budweiser or Pabst Blue Ribbon? I'll give you a few more seconds to finalize your answers. If you're already done, maybe you can spend the time pressing the subscribe button. Just a thought. <laughs> the answer to question one is the American Revolution, which began in 1775. The French Revolution started 14 years later in 1789. The answer to question two is probably no surprise to our Canadian friends. Tim Hortons opened its doors in 1964. The first Starbucks appeared in 1971. In the Battle of Highbrow versus Lowbrow, Lowbrow came first. Jersey Shore premiered in 2009. Downton Abbey would come two years later in 2011. Question four takes us back to the 1970s. The first episode of Saturday Night Live was broadcast in 1975. Saturday Night Fever appeared in theaters in 1977. And in the Battle of the Beers, Pabst Blue Ribbon was first brewed in 1844. Budweiser wouldn't arrive until 1876. Round four is for all you TV trivia fans. It's sitcom spin-offs. I'll give you the name of a popular television show, and you answer with the original show that gave birth to it. The 1990s sitcom Family Matters is our first sitcom. You probably remember it because of the lovable nerd named Urkel. But do you remember the show that gave us Family Matters? We time travel back to the 1970s for question two. Mork and Mindy is about a time-traveling alien can you name the sitcom that spawned Mork and Mindy? Question three. The Simpsons has been entertaining us for more than 30 years. Can you name the show that gave birth to Bart and his Springfield family? The show Frasier is our question four spin-off. The Seattle psychiatrist began life on which East Coast-based comedy? And finally, we head back to the 70s for question five. Maud featured B. Arthur, long before she was a golden girl. Which controversial show gave us the equally controversial Maud? All right, here are the answers to round four. The sitcom Family Matters was a spin-off of the show Perfect Strangers. Mork and Mindy, which was set in the 1970s, was a spin-off of Happy Days, which was set in the 1950s. And while the category is sitcom spin-offs, the animated The Simpsons was a spin-off of the mostly live action The Tracy Ullman Show which was more of a variety show. Sitcom number four, Frasier, came from the Boston comedy Cheers. And finally, question five. Maud was a spin-off off the show that holds the record for spinning off the most shows. It was all in the family. Our final category of the night is called Two Truths and a Lie. I'll give you three statements about something, but only two of those statements are true. You must figure out which is the lie. Question one is about South America. South America is home to both the wettest and driest places on the planet. Amazon River dolphins are pink, and there are 22 countries located in South America. One of those statements about South America is a lie. Question two involves bridges. The highest bridge on Earth is in India. The longest bridge on Earth is 100 miles long, and the city of Pittsburgh is home to 466 bridges. One of those statements about bridges is a lie. Question three is about whales. Some whales can live for more than 200 years. The gray whale is the largest animal on the planet, and blubber can make up half of a whale's body weight. Which whale fact is actually a lie? Question four is about the state of Maine. Maine is the US state that is closest to the African continent. Maine is the largest state in New England, and Maine was one of the original 13 colonies. Have you figured out the Maine lie? We head to the International Space Station for our final question. The ISS has been continuously occupied since the year 2000. The space station orbits the Earth every two hours. And because of the lack of gravity, astronauts on the ISS must exercise two hours a day. Which space station fact is actually a lie? Let's see how good your lie detector is. The lie about South America is that it's home to 22 countries. There are only 12. Amazon River dolphins are, in fact, pink. The lie about bridges? The tallest bridge on Earth is actually in China, not India. What about the whale lie? 
The grey whale is not actually the largest animal on earth. That distinction belongs to the blue whale. The lie about Maine will probably surprise you. Maine was not one of the original 13 colonies, and that means Maine is, in fact, the US state that's closest to Africa. And finally, the lie about the International Space Station. It doesn't actually orbit the planet every two hours. It's faster than that. About every 90 minutes. Round one is music of the 1980s. Let's do this. Question one. Which 1980s music legend wrote hit songs under the pseudonyms Jamie Starr, Joey Coco, and Alexander Nevermind? Question two. Weird Al Yankovic's 1983 hit, Another One Rides the Bus, was a parody of which group song? Question three. Which Guns N' Roses single was the group's only song to hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100? Question four. Kenny Loggins is considered the king of 80s movie soundtracks. Which song earned him an Academy Award nomination? And our final question of this round. The first video played on MTV was Video Killed the Radio Star. Can you name the group? I'll give you a few more seconds to write down your answers. While you're waiting, that subscribe button down below is looking kind of lonely. Why don't you just give it a little press? All right, here are the answers to our 80s music questions. Prince was the prolific pop legend. He wrote songs like Nothing Compares to You, recorded by Sinead O'Connor, and Manic Monday by The Bangles. Weird Al's Another One Rides the Bus was a parody of Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. Some artists hated Weird Al's parody songs. Others, like Michael Jackson, loved them. Guns and Roses' only number one hit was Sweet Child O' Mine. By the way, the group's guitarist Slash says he can't stand the song. Kenny Loggins received an Oscar nomination for the song Footloose. Of course, he also had soundtrack hits from movies like Top Gun and Caddyshack. And our final answer in this round. MTV's first song, Video Killed the Radio Star, was performed by The Buggles. I hope you did well in our first round because round two should be extra challenging. We call it two truths and a lie. I'll give you three statements about a person, place, or thing. But only two of those statements are true. You must figure out which is the lie. Question one. The Pacific Ocean is increasing in size by several inches each year. The Pacific Ocean is home to the tallest mountain on Earth and the Pacific Ocean is home to the remotest place on Earth. One of those facts is actually a lie. But which one? Question two is about the country of China. China has only one time zone. In China, the number five is avoided as it's associated with death, and Chinese brides traditionally wear red instead of white. Two of these statements are true. Which one is the lie? Chocolate is our third topic. It takes 400 cocoa beans to make one pound of chocolate. The average serving of milk chocolate has as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. 70% of the world's cocoa comes from West Africa. Which of these statements is a delicious lie? Our fourth topic is aircraft carriers. The first airplane took off from a ship in 1910. The British Navy was the first to build an aircraft carrier. Nimitz was the name of the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Do you know which statement is a lie? Our final topic in round two, clams. There are more than 15,000 different species of clams worldwide. Clams have no eyes or ears, but they do have noses. The giant clam has a lifespan of more than 100 years. Which clam fact is actually a clam lie? I'll give you a few more seconds to finalize your answers. In the meantime, we'd love it if you'd give our little pub quiz a thumbs up. I mean, 
Where else would you find out if clams have noses? All right, let's see how good your lie detector is. The Pacific Ocean is, in fact, home to the tallest mountain and the remotest place on Earth. But it is shrinking slightly each year, not growing. China does have only one time zone, and Chinese brides traditionally wear red. But it's the number four, not five, that's considered unlucky. As for chocolate, it does take 400 beans to make a pound, and 70% of the world's cocoa comes from West Africa. But the average serving of milk chocolate only contains as much caffeine as a cup of decaffeinated coffee. The first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier was named Enterprise, not Nimitz. That means the first airplane to take off from a ship was, in fact, in 1910. And did you sniff out the lie about clams? They don't have eyes or ears or noses. That's a clam lie. How about some history for round three? We call it which came first. We'll give you two events in history, and you just have to figure out which event came first. Question one, which came first? The US constitutional amendment banning alcohol or the constitutional amendment granting women the right to vote? Question two, which came first? Walmart or Walgreens? Question three, which came first, the Disney Channel or Nickelodeon? Question four, which came first, The Amazing Race or RuPaul's Drag Race? And finally, question five, which came first, DNA profiling or GPS navigation? I'll give you a moment to finish up your answers or to order another drink. I suspect you won't need GPS to find the bar. <laughs> All right, let's find out which came first. Question one, Americans lost the right to drink alcohol before women were granted the right to vote. Prohibition passed in 1919 and went into effect early the next year. The amendment granting women the vote passed later in 1920. The first Walgreens opened in Chicago in 1901. The first Walmart didn't open until 1962 in Arkansas. Nickelodeon has been in the news a lot lately. It debuted in 1979. The Disney Channel came a few years later in 1983. The Amazing Race has been sending teams around the world since 2001. RuPaul's Drag Race sashayed onto our TVs in 2009. And finally, DNA profiling first became a crime-fighting tool in 1984. Commercial GPS arrived in 1978. We walk the red carpet for round four. It's all about Oscar winners. I'll give you two actors who were up for an Academy Award in the same category in the same year. You just have to figure out who took home the statue. Question 1. Academy Awards 2020. Best Actor. Jonathan Price for The Two Popes or Joaquin Phoenix for The Joker. Academy Awards 1974. Best Supporting Actress. Tatum O'Neill for Paper Moon or Linda Blair for The Exorcist. Academy Awards 1984. Best Actress. Meryl Streep for Silkwood or Shirley MacLaine for Terms of Endearment. Academy Awards 1995 Best Actor Tom Hanks for Forrest Gump or John Travolta for Pulp Fiction. And finally, Academy Awards 1981 Best Actor Robert De Niro for Raging Bull or John Hurt in The Elephant Man. While you finish up your answers, you might want to drop a comment letting us know what categories you'd like to see us tackle in our next pub quiz. All right, here are the winning answers in our Oscar winners round. 
The best actor in 2020 was Joaquin Phoenix. Heath Ledger also won an Oscar for playing the Joker. In 1974, a 10-year-old Tatum O'Neill became the youngest Oscar winner for her role in Paper Moon, opposite her father. Meryl Streep may be an Oscar magnet, but in 1984, she lost the best actress race to Shirley MacLaine in terms of endearment. In the battle of two iconic movie roles, Tom Hanks in Forrest Gump edged out John Travolta in the 1995 Best Actor race, and Robert De Niro earned his Oscar in 1981 by gaining 80 pounds during production of Raging Bull. Don't forget about our final double or nothing bonus question after the final round. Fittingly, it's a question about pub quizzes. Our final category of the night is a U.S. state face-off. We'll give you one fact and two states. You have to decide which state that fact applies to. Question 1. This state contains the geographic center of North America. Is it Colorado or North Dakota? Question 2. This state was the first to legalize same-sex marriage. Is it Massachusetts or California? Question 3. Pepsi was invented in this state. Was it North Carolina or Arkansas? Question 4. Every county in this state contains some part of a national forest. Is it Maine or Utah? And finally, question 5. This state handles 70% of the world's internet traffic. Is that Virginia or California? I'll give you a few seconds to finalize your answers. Okay, our final round answers. The U.S. state that contains the geographic center of North America is North Dakota. The first state to legalize same-sex marriage was Massachusetts. Pepsi was invented in North Carolina. Every county in Utah contains some part of a national forest. And finally, 70% of the world's internet traffic is handled in Virginia. And now on to our final bonus question. It's double or nothing on this question about the pub quiz. The UK company Burns and Porter is credited with the explosive popularity of British pub quizzes during which decade? British pub quizzes exploded in popularity during the 1970s. And we begin with the all-important question. Coffee or tea? Question 1. Do farmers worldwide produce more coffee or more tea each year? Question 2. What percentage of American coffee drinkers prefer their morning brew black? Is it more or less than 30%? Question 3. Do Brits drink more cups of tea each day? or Americans more cups of coffee? Question 4. More than half of American coffee drinkers 45 and older prefer regular coffee. What's the preferred coffee drink of those under 45? And finally, question 5. In the UK, which is considered more posh, high tea or low tea? We'll give you a few moments to answer and let you have a sip of tea or whatever your preferred beverage right now. <laughs> All right, let's find out how much you know about coffee and tea. The answer to question one, nearly three times as much coffee is produced by farmers worldwide. But hang on, it takes much less tea than coffee to brew a cup. Tea is a far more popular drink worldwide. The answer to question two, just 20% of American coffee drinkers prefer black coffee. Question three, Brits drink an average of six cups of tea each day, while Americans average three cups of coffee. However, coffee has about twice as much caffeine as tea, so we're about as equally caffeinated. <laughs> Question four, younger American coffee drinkers now say they prefer iced coffee to regular hot coffee. And our final question, low tea is considered more posh than high tea. Low tea is typically enjoyed by the aristocracy at a low table, like a coffee table, ironically. High tea is enjoyed by the working class and is actually a meal typically served along with a pot of tea. We hit the road for our second category. 
but which side of the road? Question 1. How many European countries, in addition to the UK, drive on the left-hand side of the road? Question 2. Name the only U.S. territory where motorists drive on the left-hand side of the road. Question 3. Americans love their cars. Only about 8% of Americans live in households without vehicles. What percentage of people in the UK live in car-free households? Is it more or less than 25%? Question 4. In 2023, a small SUV, the Ford Puma, was the best-selling vehicle in the UK. Ford also topped the best-seller list in the US. Can you name the best-selling vehicle in the US in 2023? And our final question in this round. Red double-decker buses are a symbol of the UK. But what percentage of people in the UK actually take a bus daily? Is it more or less than 10%? As you finalize your answers, we want to share something we have in common. We'd both love it if you would hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss another fun pub quiz. Now to the answers. Question one. Drivers in three other European countries drive on the left-hand side of the road. Ireland, Cyprus, and Malta. Some Americans do drive on the left-hand side of the road. The answer to question two is the US Virgin Islands. For question three, Nearly one-third of UK households don't have cars, so the answer is more than 25%. It's probably no surprise that Americans like big trucks. The answer to question four in the best-selling vehicle in the US is the Ford F-150 pickup truck. And while you may have ridden on a double-decker bus while visiting the UK, only about 7% of people in the UK ride buses each day. So less than 10% is the answer. We're chuffed to bring you our third category. Chuffed is British slang for happy or pleased. So you've probably figured out that all of our questions in this round are about slang. Question one. If someone in the UK called you balmy, would that be a compliment or an insult? Question two. If an American said you were being salty after a football match, what would that mean? Question three. What's the American version of the British slang term, Bagsy? Question four. If an American asks you for the tea, chances are she doesn't want a drink. What does she want? And question five. If your UK friend asks to borrow a bog roll, what does he need? We'll give you a few seconds to complete your answers. And before you get too trolled tonight, we hope you'll give our little pub quiz a thumbs up. By the way, trolled is British slang for drunk. Okay, the answers to round three. In question one, barmy means mad or crazy, so that would be an insult. Question two, if you're being salty after a match, chances are your team lost. Salty means angry or bitter. Question three. The American version of Bagsy is dibs. For example, you can call Bagsy on the front seat before a road trip. Question four. If an American asks for the tea, she probably isn't looking for a cup of Earl Grey. She wants gossip. And finally, your desperate friend asking for a bog roll is in search of toilet paper. Make sure you stick around after round five for our all-in bonus question. It has to do with the most viewed TV event in history. Round four now, and it's the pound versus the dollar. We're talking money. Question one. The British pound is the oldest surviving independent currency. Has it been around more or less than 1,000 years? Question two. If someone in the United States says he paid five Gs for a used car, how much money exchanged hands? Question three. How much is a quid in the UK? Question four. In London's financial culture, how much money is a yard? And our final question in this round. In the US, banknotes are sometimes called dead presidents. Can you name the two men on paper currency who were never president? 
While you finish up your answers, consider dropping us a comment with ideas for other trivia topics you'd like to see. Okay, the answers to round four. Question one. The British pound has been around for more than a thousand years. 1,200 years to be more precise. Question two. 5G's in the United States is $5,000. G is short for a grand. Question three. A quid in the UK stands for one pound. Our fourth question now. In financial circles in London, a yard is a billion pounds or a billion dollars. And finally, the two men on American banknotes who were never president, Benjamin Franklin and Alexander Hamilton. We have one more category before our all-in final bonus question. And we've saved our most contentious questions for last. The Revolutionary War. Or as we call it, the War for American Independence. Question 1. Name the British monarch during the war. Question 2. The First Continental Congress was held in which city? Question 3. Who was the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence? Question 4. What animal appeared on the popular war flag along with the phrase, Don't tread on me? And our final question in this round. Can you name the treaty that officially ended the war and recognized the U.S. as an independent nation. After we're done, be sure to share your score in the comments. Okay, let's see those correct answers for round five. The monarch during the war was King George III. While losing the colonies was a blow for England, he served for 59 years. The answer to question two. Philadelphia was the city that hosted the first Continental Congress. Question three, ask the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence. That was John Hancock, who also provided the largest signature on the Declaration. The animal on the Don't Tread on Me flag is a snake. And finally, the treaty that ended the war and recognized the United States was the Treaty of Paris, signed in 1783. Don't go anywhere because our all-in final bonus question is here. The most watched television event in history took place in one of our two countries. Can you name the event that attracted an estimated 5 billion viewers? The most watched television event in history occurred on September 19th, 2022 and was the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. We begin with presidential firsts. Question 1. Name the first president to be sworn in on a Bible. Number 2. Name the first and only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. Our third question. Name the first president to be a guest on a podcast while in office. Question 4. Name the first president to be born in a hospital. And finally, Name the first president born in Illinois. I'll give you a few moments to finalize your answers. You can also use this time to do your civic duty and give this video a thumbs up. I'm your quiz master and I approve this message. All right, the answers to round one. The first president to be sworn in on a Bible was the first president. George Washington. Four other presidents chose to use that same Bible. Grover Cleveland was the first president to serve non-consecutive terms. He was the 22nd and 24th president of the United States. Barack Obama was the first president to guest on a podcast while in office. He talked sports on an ESPN podcast in 2012. Jimmy Carter was the first president to be born in a hospital. A lot of you may have thought Abraham Lincoln was the first president born in Illinois, since the state calls itself the land of Lincoln. But the answer is actually Ronald Reagan. Lincoln was born in neighboring Kentucky. Round two now, and we're tackling Disney firsts. Question one. The first full-length animated feature film was which Disney classic released in 1937? Question 2. 
Name Walt Disney's older brother who purchased the very first ticket to Disneyland in 1955. Question 3. How much did tickets to Disney World cost when the park first opened in 1971? Was it more or less than $10? Question 4. Name the first full-length computer-generated animated feature film released by Disney in 1995. Question 5. Name the first animated film nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. I'll give you a few seconds to finalize your answers. If you're a Disney genius and are already done, consider dropping us a comment with what subjects you'd like to see us tackle in our next quiz. Okay, the answers for round two. The first full-length animated feature film was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. In question two, Walt Disney's older brother was named Roy Disney. Question three asked the price of the first tickets to Disney World. Tickets in 1971 went for just $3.50, so the answer is less than $10. The first full-length computer-generated animated feature film was Toy Story. The series of films has brought in more than $3 billion for Disney. And the final answer, the first animated film nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture was Beauty and the Beast. All right, all right, all right. It's time for round three. I didn't do that line justice, did I? I'll give you the name of a character played by Matthew McConaughey, and you have to name the movie. McConaughey's first film role was as David Wooderson in this 1993 cult classic. In 2008, the actor took on the role of Hollywood agent Rick Peck in this controversial film. In 2011, McConaughey played attorney Mickey Holler in this movie, based on a popular book. In 2013, McConaughey starred in two iconic movies. In the first, he played stockbroker Mark Hanna, alongside Leonardo DiCaprio in this film. That same year, the actor lost nearly 50 pounds to play cowboy Ron Woodruff in this Oscar-nominated movie. While you sort through your McConaughey film knowledge, this reminder, stick around until the very end for our final bonus question. Today's question has to do with meteorology. Now to the round three answers. McConaughey played creepy David Wooderson in 1993's Dazed and Confused. Hollywood agent Rick Peck was a character in the 2008 film Tropic Thunder, but most people remember it as the movie featuring Robert Downey Jr. in blackface. Question 3. McConaughey tackled the role of attorney Mickey Holler in the movie The Lincoln Lawyer. It has since been turned into a TV series without McConaughey. McConaughey played stockbroker Mark Hanna in The Wolf of Wall Street. And that same year, McConaughey played AIDS patient Ron Woodruff in Dallas Buyers Club, a role that earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor. For our fourth round, all you have to do is name that booze. We will give you a popular mixed drink and you have to tell us the spirit that your bartender will most commonly use to make it. We'll start off easy. What liquor is most commonly used in a margarita? Question 2. A cosmopolitan typically includes Cointreau and what other common liquor? We're getting a little woozy now for our third drink, the mint julep. This Kentucky Derby classic includes which spirit? Question 4. 
The lemonade Tom Collins is usually made with what type of booze? And our final drink of this round, which popular spirit gives a Cuba Libre its kick? I'll give you a few more seconds to complete your answers and have another sip of beer? Really? You heathens? Here are the answers to round four. A margarita is typically made using tequila. Vodka is typically the main spirit in a cosmopolitan. The Kentucky Derby classic mint julep is made with good old Kentucky bourbon. The Tom Collins is most often made using gin. And finally, even if you've never had a Cuba Libre, you might have guessed that the main spirit is rum. The last category before our final bonus question is U.S. college mascots. Question 1. What type of animal is the University of Georgia's mascot? Question 2. Which Ivy League University's mascot is Big Red Bear? Our third question. What type of animal is the University of South Carolina's mascot? Cocky, the Gamecock. Question 4. Bleacher Report named the University of Oregon's mascot the best in the nation. Which Disney character represents this West Coast University? And our final question in college mascots. Name the University of California, Santa Cruz's slimy mascot who gained fame in the movie Pulp Fiction. While you sort out your college mascots, we'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our next trivia video. And a reminder, our final bonus question is coming up next. The answers to our fifth round. The University of Georgia's mascot is a bulldog. Big Red Bear represents Cornell University. Cocky the Gamecock is a rooster. The answer to question four is Donald Duck. The Oregon Duck is based on the Disney character. And the UC Santa Cruz slimy mascot is Sammy the Slug. I think if you got that one right, you already get bonus points. But here's our final bonus question. Can you name this type of tall cloud that can produce damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes? A couple of hints for you. These are often called thunderheads, and meteorologists abbreviate them with the letters CB. Have you figured it out? The mystery clouds and the answer to our final bonus question is cumulonimbus clouds. Our first category is Gingers in History. We'll describe a person's accomplishments and you tell us the famous Ginger's name. Remember, that red hair may have turned gray in later life. We'll start off with an easy one. Question 1. This famous Ginger served as Prime Minister of the UK twice and coined the term Iron Curtain. Question 2. This Dutch painter sold only one painting in his short life. But this redhead is among the most famous artists in history. Question 3. This biblical figure was a supporter of Jesus, witnessed his crucifixion, and is often wrongly portrayed as a prostitute. Our fourth ginger was born Samuel Clemens and many consider him the greatest humorist the United States has ever produced. And our final ginger was an American statesman who appears on the $10 bill and is the subject of a popular musical. We'll give you a few minutes to sort out your historical redheads. While you're waiting, we'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button so you won't miss our next pub quiz. Next time, we might tackle famous blondes. Who knows? <laughs> All right, our Gingers in History answers. The famous UK Prime Minister was, of course, Winston Churchill. The red-headed Dutch painter is Vincent van Gogh, famous for colorful works like The Starry Night. 
Our biblical follower of Jesus is Mary Magdalene. She's considered a saint by most Christian denominations. Ginger number four is usually remembered for his shock of gray hair and for works like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Of course, it's Mark Twain. And our last redhead has been the toast of Broadway recently. It's the first Secretary of the Treasury in the United States, Alexander Hamilton. For round two, we head to the poker table. We'll give you two poker hands, and you just have to tell us which hand would win in a game of standard poker. In our first matchup, it's Mary Ann versus Marcus. Just choose which player has the better hand. With our second pair of hands, we have Beverly going head to head with Martin. Who would take the pot in this face off? Travis and Keith have our third set of poker hands. Do you know who would win here? Our fourth matchup has Victoria facing Elizabeth. Who do you think would walk away with the money in this case? And our final set of hands is a showdown between Jin and Carson. Who has the better hand and would take the pot? While you finalize your poker answers, we want to remind you to stick around until the very end of this pub quiz for our final bonus question. It's a tough one. Okay, let's award some money. In our first round, Mary Ann has a great hand with four queens. But Marcus has a straight flush, and that's even better. Marcus takes home the money. In our second pair of hands, Martin has a beautiful flush. But Beverly's full house would win the pot. We've got a couple of bluffers going head to head in round three. Both are pretty lousy hands. But Keith's ace high beats the king high that Travis is holding. Our fourth face off now. Victoria has a pretty straight, but Elizabeth has a flush and takes this pot home. And our final head to head has Jin taking on Carson. Jin is very confident with a pair of aces and a pair of kings. But it's Carson who would bag the prize with his three threes. For round three, we'll show you a few seconds of an iconic music video, and you just have to identify the title and artist. Oh wait, one thing I forgot to mention. You won't be able to hear the music. Our version of MTV is on mute. But hey, at least we're still playing music videos. We head back to the 1980s for our first video. Can you identify the title and this iconic artist? Our second video won the Grammy in 2011 for Best Music Video. Can you identify this classic without the sound? No wedding reception would be complete without our third entry. Can you name the song and the legendary artist? If you were alive during the 1990s, our fourth video should be pretty familiar to you, but what about without the sound? Our final soundless video is going to be a challenge. It was released in 2006, and the artist calls it his most autobiographical song. Can you name that artist along with the title of the song? While you finish your list of title and artists, we would love it if you gave this pub quiz a big thumbs up. Okay, the answers to our silent video round. You probably guessed that our first video was Like a Virgin by the Queen of Pop, Madonna. Silent video number two comes to us courtesy of Lady Gaga and is her classic Bad Romance. The wedding reception dance floor is always packed when the DJ plays Beyonce's Single Ladies. That's the answer to question three. Video number four is a 1990s grunge classic. Did you recognize Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit? And did you recognize our final silent video? It was White and Nerdy by Weird Al Yankovic, one of his biggest hits. 
If you struggled in our third round, maybe you can rebound in round four. It's one of our favorites called Two Truths and a Lie. I'll give you three statements about a person, place, or thing. But only two of those statements are true. You must figure out which is the lie. Question one is about dachshunds. The name dachshund is German for badger dog. Dachshunds come in smooth, curly, and long-haired coats. The dachshund was the first Olympic animal mascot. Two of these statements about wiener dogs are true, but one of them is a long dog lie. Question two is about the red planet. A Mars year is about nine Earth months. Mars is 53% smaller than Earth. Mars has two moons, which Mars fact is actually a lie. Question three is about Australia. 90% of Australians live along the coast. The Australian Alps get more snow than the Swiss Alps. The third largest city, Brisbane, is the country's capital. Two of those statements about Australia are true, but one is a down under lie. Our fourth question is about teeth. Humans have 16 baby teeth, but 32 as adults. Tooth enamel is harder than bone. Modern toothpaste has only been available for about 100 years. Do you know which of these facts about teeth is actually a lie? We'll find out soon. Our final question in this round is about the very first Super Bowl. The first Super Bowl was held in 1967. Both NBC and CBS broadcast the game. The Pittsburgh Steelers won the first Super Bowl. Two of these Super Bowl statements are true, but one fact about the big game is actually a big lie. We'll sort out the facts and lies in a moment. In the meantime, drop us a comment and let us know what topics you'd like us to tackle in a future pub quiz. Question one was about dachshunds. The name dachshund is German for badger hunter. And the first animal mascot in the Olympics was a dachshund. But Curly is not one of the three dachshund coats. That's a lie. We head to Mars now. The planet is 53% smaller than Earth, and Mars does have two moons. But the Mars year is actually around two Earth years, not nine months. That was a lie. Let's head down under for the answers to our third question. Because the country has a large desert in the middle, 90% of Australians do live along the coast. And the Australian Alps do receive more snow than the Swiss Alps. So that means Brisbane is not Australia's capital. That would be Canberra, which is the country's eighth largest city. Our fourth question is about teeth. Tooth enamel is actually harder than bone, and modern toothpaste has only been available for about 100 years. But babies typically grow 20 teeth, not 16. That was a lie. And finally, we head back in time to the first Super Bowl in 1967. It was, in fact, broadcast on both NBC and CBS, but the Pittsburgh Steelers did not win the first Super Bowl. That's a lie. The Green Bay Packers took home that first title. And our last round before the final bonus question is called After American Idol. We will describe the career of a singer who competed on American Idol. And you must tell us the name of the performer. Season 4. Winner. This country singer-songwriter achieved huge success with songs like Jesus, Take the Wheel, and Before He Cheats. Season 3 seventh place finisher. The youngest woman to win an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. Season 3 winner. Played the lead in the Broadway and film versions of the musical The Color Purple. Season 10. Winner. His single Five More Minutes became his first number one country single in 2018. 
Season 8, Runner Up, first openly gay artist to top the Billboard album charts and now lead vocalist for the group Queen. Our final bonus question is coming up next, but first our American Idol answers. The winner of season four was country superstar Carrie Underwood, the seventh place finisher of season three, who has won just about every major entertainment award is Jennifer Hudson. The winner of that same season is our next answer. Fantasia Barrino starred in The Color Purple. Country singer Scotty McCreary was the winner of season 10 of the talent competition and the lead vocalist of Queen and the runner-up in season 8 of American Idol is Adam Lambert. Don't go anywhere. Our final bonus question starts right now. Which athlete holds the record for the most medals won in a single Olympic Games? A couple of hints for you. This record was set during the Summer Olympics, and this took place during our current century. Of course, we're talking about swimmer Michael Phelps, who won eight gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. We head to space for our first category, the universe. Question one. Name the spacecraft launched by NASA in 1977 that has traveled beyond the solar system into interstellar space. Question two. What is the term for a region of space-time exhibiting gravitational acceleration so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape? Our third question is about our celestial neighbors. What is the name of the galaxy nearest to the Milky Way, our galaxy. Question four. Which planet has the highest known mountain in the solar system named Olympus Mons? And finally, what is the term for the point in a planet's orbit where it is closest to the sun? We'll give you a few seconds to finish up your celestial answers. In the meantime, this reminder Stick around until the very end for our final bonus question. The subject is presidential politics. All right, now the answers to round one. The 1977 spacecraft that has traveled beyond the solar system is Voyager 1. The gravity-sucking region of space in question 2 is a black hole. Our celestial next-door neighbor is Andromeda. The answer to our fourth question. The tallest mountain in the solar system is on Mars. It's three times higher than Mount Everest. And finally, the point in a planet's orbit when it's closest to the sun is called the perihelion. We tackled the real universe in the first round. Round two asks about a couple of fictional universes. We'll show you a spaceship from either Star Wars or Star Trek, and you just have to guess which universe to which it belongs. Our first ship is the Star Destroyer. You might think of it as the equivalent of an aircraft carrier. The question is, Star Wars or Star Trek? The Borg Cube is our second fictional ship. Is this massive vessel from Star Wars or Star Trek? The much smaller TIE Fighter is our next spacecraft. TIE stands for Twin Ion Engine. Is it a Star Wars or Star Trek ship? The intimidating bird of prey is the main ship of a feared warrior species. Was it a ship in the Star Wars or Star Trek universe? And finally, we have the Imperial Shuttle, which was the preferred mode of transportation for high-ranking officers in which fictional franchise? Star Wars or Star Trek? We'll give you a few minutes to sort out your fictional spaceships. If you've already completed the assignment, we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss our next Out of This World pub quiz. All right, the answers for round two. The Star Destroyer struck fear into the hearts of the rebels in the Star Wars universe. Our second ship, the Borg Cube, 
also made many people's blood run cold, but this time in the Star Trek universe. The TIE Fighter is a combat ship in the Star Wars universe. The Bird of Prey is the main vessel of the Klingons, a warrior race in the Star Trek universe. And finally, you might find Darth Vader and other high-ranking military officers traveling the Star Wars universe in the Imperial Shuttle. We return to Earth for our next round. Back by popular demand, we have which came first. We'll give you two events in history, and you just have to tell us which one came first. Question 1. Which came first? The completion of the Sistine Chapel or the Blue Mosque? Question 2. Which came first? The opening of the first Home Depot or the opening of the first Lowe's? Question 3. Which came first? Stonehenge or the Easter Island statues? Question 4. Which came first, the U.S. Powerball Lottery or the Mega Millions Lottery? And finally, question five, which came first, Britain's Queen Victoria or Queen Anne? While you are sorting out your history, we invite you to drop us a comment and let us know what topics you'd like us to tackle in a future pub quiz. Okay, let's find out which came first. The beautiful Blue Mosque in Istanbul was completed in the year 1617. The Sistine Chapel was finished more than 200 years earlier. In question two, do-it-yourselfers have been spending their weekends at Home Depot since 1979. But Lowe's has been around much longer. The first opened in 1921. In our third question, the first of those Easter Island statues were carved around the year 1250, but Stonehenge dates all the way back to around 3100 BC. In question four, the Powerball started several years before Mega Millions. And finally, Queen Victoria's reign began 130 years after Queen Anne's. We will not pass go or collect $200 heading into round four. That's because we're playing Monopoly! <laughs> Question one. Which city served as the inspiration for the original Monopoly game board layout? Question two. What is the name of the character featured on the Monopoly board's go to jail space? Question three. Which Monopoly token was retired in 2017 and replaced with the T-Rex. Question four. What's the full name of Mr. Monopoly, the mascot character for Monopoly? And our final question. Name the 1904 board game that became the inspiration for Monopoly. While you finalize your Monopoly answers, we'd sure appreciate it if you would give our little pub quiz a thumbs up. Okay, the Monopoly answers now. The inspiration for Monopoly was Atlantic City, New Jersey. The answer to question two. The character featured on the go to jail space is Officer Edgar Mallory. In the third question, the T-Rex took the place of the thimble token, which was retired in 2017. The answer to question four. The full name of Mr. Monopoly is Rich Uncle Pennybags. And finally, the 1904 board game that inspired Monopoly was called The Landlord's Game. We have a sweet final category before our final bonus question. It's 1980s candies. Question one. What tiny, tangy, crunchy candy was named Candy of the Year by the National Candy Wholesalers Association in 1985? Question two. What bubblegum was introduced in 1988 with the tagline, It's six feet of bubblegum, for you, not them? Question three. What candy, which was invented as an alternative to thumb sucking, became a fashion trend during the 1980s? Question four. What controversial bubblegum introduced in 1980 was invented by a baseball player as an alternative to chewing tobacco? And finally, question five. 
Which jelly bean brand gained major popularity in the 1980s because it was a favorite of President Ronald Reagan? While you finish your answers, and before that sugar rush kicks in, we'd love it if you'd turn on notifications so you'll never miss one of our fun trivia videos. Okay, the answers to round five. The tiny, tangy candy of the year in 1985 was Nerds. In question two, the six feet of bubble gum was Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape. Question three, the 1980s fashion trend was Ring Pops. The controversial gum from question four was Big League Chew. And finally, President Reagan liked these jelly beans so much he gave them as White House gifts. They are Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. Don't go anywhere because our final bonus question starts right now. The losing major party presidential candidates in 1812 and 2016 shared which last name? DeWitt Clinton lost to James Madison in 1812 and Hillary Clinton was defeated by Donald Trump in 2016. So the answer is Clinton. Great job. Be sure to share your score in the comments. And check out one of these other fun trivia videos.